Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Luke chapter 11, verses 37 to 41. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. So he went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not first wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools! Did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for alms those things that are within. And see, everything will be clean for you. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by the Reverend Thomas Sharp. Are you a person who likes ritual in church, little ceremonies, exciting things going bing or puffing up in smoke, people moving around, things being laid on altars, beautiful candles, beautiful vestments, or are you a bit critical of them? Do they feel like they sometimes distract? In today's Gospel, Jesus is pretty brutal with a Pharisee who's having him round to dinner. The Pharisee expects Jesus to make the ritual purification, the washing, before Jesus eats. And he's amazed when Jesus doesn't. And when he challenges Jesus, well, what does Jesus say to him? Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for arms those things that are within, and see, everything will be clean for you. Now, on first glance, it sounds like Jesus is simply saying to the Pharisee, everything you've been doing, all the law, all the rituals you've been keeping, are nothing worth. Just do it in the heart. But that's not what Jesus is saying at all. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? Both matter. Rituals are important in church. Ceremonies are important. Traditions are important when they have a purpose. But what is that purpose? St Paul had to grapple with the purpose of the law. Now he was proclaiming the gospel of Jesus, that we're saved because God loves us by God's grace and that the law in itself cannot save us, 
what was the purpose of keeping the Jewish law, keeping the Old Testament commandments? It seemed like they were completely pointless. But no, Paul said that the law still mattered because it led us to God. The law was given not to make us perfect, not to make us as holy as God because that was impossible. But the law was given to lead us to the lawgiver, the God who loves us and wants us to come to him. There's a wonderful moment where Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, talks about Abraham, the father of Judaism, the one, the first one who was circumcised to keep the covenant. Was it the law that saved Abraham? No. Abraham was saved by his faith, Paul says. The covenant led Abraham to God. And so the law of love, the law that shows us what God's love looks like, justice and mercy, these things lead us to God. Jesus' point here isn't that the hand washing, the ritual purification before dinner is completely pointless. What Jesus is saying is, if it does not lead you to love God, to love your neighbour and love yourself, then it's not doing what it's meant to do. Now, I'm a great fan of ritual and ceremony in religion. Behind me, you can see the icons that are very important to me, a very ancient way of praying of praying with the church in heaven and on earth consciously. I like wearing nice things at the Eucharist. I like the fact that we use words that have been used for a thousand years by our sisters and brothers around the world. I like the fact that the rituals and ceremonies we have mean things, but I like them because they mean things, not just because they're nice. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? The things of our heart matter, the things of our body matter. We are a whole person. Our faith is meant to be enacted. Our love is meant to be lived. Our doing is meant to, and of course it does, affect our feeling, our believing the things of our soul, because we are a whole and singular, unified person. Maybe the ceremonies in church don't do lots for you. That's fine. But that doesn't mean they're completely worthless. Maybe ritual almsgiving isn't a thing. But that's perhaps good because it keeps us humble. Our almsgiving is done in secret. What are the ceremonies, the rituals, the, the rhythms in your prayer life, in your relationship with God that sustain you? What are the things that lead you to God? Hold on to those things. Cherish them. They're like the beating of your heart and they are gifts from God if they lead you to him. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord, we pray for all who bring hope into our lives, not cheap hope or hope bound for disillusionment, but hope that sees a better future and gives us strength to move together towards it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for all the signs of hope that we see. The little acts of goodness and the greater actions that bring light 
into darkest places. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we pray that we may be hopeful people. Not because we overestimate who we are and what we can do. But because we are aware of your continued graciousness towards us. Lord, have mercy. Sovereign God, who set your servant Edward upon the throne of an earthly kingdom and inspired him with zeal for the kingdom of heaven, grant that we may so confess the faith of Christ by word and deed that we may with all your saints inherit your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of all grace draw you to himself by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, inspiring in you the paths of holiness, love and persistent prayer. May this be God's blessing to you today. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that our choirs have returned to sing in the cathedral, the format of our daily reflections has changed. On Thursdays and Fridays, a short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of choral evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.30pm or watch at your convenience later. Monday to Wednesday's reflections will remain the same. We hope and pray that you will continue to find them helpful.